sister Schubert's business making homemade rolls has grown a lot from her days of making just a few loaves of bread for a church fair. But through her success, she's made sure that one thing has remained the same, that every single roll is still placed in the pan by hand. Sister Schubert, founder of Sister Schubert's Homemade Rolls, says for as long as she can remember, she's loved to cook. She learned how to bake from her grandmother, who also taught her how to manage a family and run a business. Using her grandmother's heirloom recipe, Sister began baking rolls for church fundraisers. With hard work and faith, Sister gradually turned her love for baking into a million-dollar business. And it's much more than just baking now. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Sister Schubert. It is great to have great you to here. Be here. We should mention, I'm not calling you sister because you're a sister in the Lord. I mean, there's a whole story behind that. How did you get the name? Well, I'm one of five children, in, of course, in the South. When you're born into that large of a family, somebody's usually dubbed sister and somebody's brother. Well, I was second born, and my older sister was only about 15 months old. So she, my family said, call her sister. And she <laughs> did, and my friends all did. My college professors did, and no I've just been way. sister all my life. Wow. Yeah. So everybody has really, la I think it was meant to be. I was meant to be sister, <laughs> not Patricia. <laughs> you also were meant to do what you're doing today, which is to prepare wonderful food. How did this whole business start for you? Well, it actually started from a frozen food fair at my church, a little church in Troy, Alabama. And I baked about 20 pans of these rolls, my grandmother's rolls, that she taught me how to make when I was about 12 years old. Wow. And we sold all those rolls. And the second, third year, by that year, they had taken over 300 orders for rolls. Did you have any idea when you decided to actually try this as an official business that it would grow to the magnitude that it has? No, that's, that's one of those things that I dreamed it. I yeah. wanted it to happen. <laughs> and I even remember a conversation that I had with my father. He was in the furniture business, and he said, you know, I know how much money I'm going to make if I sell a dining room suit. How much money can you make off a pan of rolls? And I said, Daddy, that's not the question. The question is, how many pans of rolls can we make and sell? That's the question. And so I knew all along in my head that yeah. that was my dream, that was my vision. But... I never dreamed that it would happen so quickly. And you know, when God blesses us with something, like he's blessed you with the roles mm -hmm. and the business concept and the success, there's always more to it than that. Out of all of that and the success of it came the Barnes Family Foundation. Tell me about yes. that. Well, when we sold the stock of the company in the year 2000, I found myself with the huge responsibility of a tremendous sum of God's money because mm -hmm. I've never thought of it in any way, shape, or form as mine. It was always His. And it's never been any problem for me to figure out how to make X number of dollars in profit out of the business. But it was the biggest challenge in my life to be a good steward of what God had what so graciously it. given me. Yeah to be in charge of. And I know that, and because it's near and dear to my heart, that you've been very involved in helping children in Ukraine. Tell yes. me about that. Well, that was one of those happenstance things. This is a God thing. I was at work and someone called me and said, there's a missionary that's gonna be speaking at the Rotary Club today and I think you might wanna come here. And, <laughs> well, I had no intention of going, but God said, you're going. And it worked out, so I went. And from that point, 10 years later, I have an apartment in Ukraine. I have helped to develop and re renovate and restore through the help of many other loving, wonderful Christians, a foster care facility for 63 beautiful little wow. orphaned and abandoned children. And my husband, George, and I have a fifth son, Alexander, that was born in the country of Ukraine. That now is living... A wonderful, a wonderful life, life here. Life. Isn't yes. that awesome? Yes. Well, speaking of George, today we're going to take a look at something you call George's Chili. And can I just say, I, I wish television sets had noses because you <laughs> need to smell this. It smells so good. Tell me what you're doing here. Well, you know, chili is one of those things that's probably a favorite in lots of families. And when George says to the family, well, I'm going to the grocery store today and make chili, we all get really excited and happy because <laughs> everybody has their own ideas about chili. Uh -huh. But George came up with this fabulous recipe, and you start with two pounds of ground beef, ground chuck. Mm -hmm. You can do a leaner cut of meat if you want to, about a cup and a half of onions, and you want to saute those onions and get the little sweetness to come out in uh -huh. them before you just dump them in there. That's what I'm smelling is yes. the wonderful onions in And that. there's a special ingredient in every recipe that I do, and George's special recipe in this one is cumin, 
And wow. my touch to it was a little tablespoon of sugar because that acidity in the, in the in tomatoes, the tomatoes yes. can be a little overpowering sometimes. But you take about two large cans of chopped tomatoes uh -huh. and you add that okay. along with my little tablespoon of sugar that we must have. His cumin is already in there. Now, salt and chili powder are what I call to taste for people's uh -huh. likings. I prefer about two tablespoons of salt, but some people like their, their chili saltier. Mm -hmm. I, I really love the flavor of chili powder, so I have request, re, I, in my recipe, I say four tablespoons uh -huh. of chili powder. Well, it is kind of what makes it and pepper chili. to taste, <laughs> pepper to taste. And one of the secrets to making really wonderful chili, this is George's idea as well, is if you like beans in your mm -hmm. chili, you use the dark red kidney beans, mm -hmm. but you wait until after you've simmered your chili for about two hours. Oh, really? And about the last 15 minutes, you add your beans and stir them once and never stir them again. Your beans oh. will stay nice and firm and really Oh, well, that's wonderful. good to know because I've made chili where they've gotten kind of mushy and you so think, your what beans are do fully wrong? cooked so you really just want them in there if you like beans stir them once and forget and, and let them yes let them be okay so look can we come over here because look at this well we have some wonderful this is a blueberry lemon cream cheese trifle wow and the secret <laughs> ingredient to this that makes it taste so homemade is that you take a pan of sister schubert's blueberry cream cheese rolls and you break those up as your sponge cake for this trifle wow. and you begin layering with your sponge cake and your lemon cream that's made with whipped cream and mm -hmm. lemon curd yes real whipped cream you can use a substitute if you want but my grandmother always cooked with real things and yeah. so do I and it makes it just and luscious and yummy. And we should mention yummy. that the people buy your product in the freezer section, section of the store, and yes. there are no preservatives in what you do. No, and, and Barbara Mandrell has a song that says she was country before country was cool. <laughs> well, I was green before green was cool because we never have ever put anything in our rolls that my grandmother didn't do. They're made wow. exactly like she makes them. Well, I just, I loved your story because I grew up baking with my grandmother in her kitchen too. Mm -hmm. And I just want all of you to know that if you want to learn how to prepare many of the treats that you just saw here, you can log on to our website at cbn.com, but you can also check out this Sister Schubert's cookbook. And can I tell you, it's entitled Cast Your Bread Upon the Waters. It's available nationwide. I'm a cookbook collector and it's beautiful. Thank it's you. more than a cookbook. It's really a story. It does tell the whole story of my beginnings in the company and how I became successful at that, how I could manage to be successful with raising a family of five children and seven grandchildren in the process. And starting an international ministry along with her business. <laughs> and, so and how my faith <laughs> played a role in the success of yeah. all of that. You, you want to get a hold of it. It's a beautiful addition to your home, to your kitchen, and you'll enjoy reading. And if you're an entrepreneur, it'll inspire you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for it's been great me. to have you here.